Last night, I <laughs> told a couple stories that I ended up taking down, including one about my dad having a bullet shot past his head in my neighborhood. Um, it was about a year before my hunger strike. And uh, I told another story about when I was 18 years old, I went to Colorado because I was in love with this girl named Michelle from Texas. Well, I, I was from Texas. She was from Colorado. And um, I think someone tampered with my car and I was driving down the highway and I wasn't planning on going to focus on the family, but I decided to go to focus on the family anyways because uh, I wanted to go to Wits End. And when I exited, I was driving down the access road and my hood flew through my windshield and it landed, or it ended up about right there. Um, and I didn't die, I think, because I was going at slower speed. And I think that I probably would have died if I was on the interstate. Um, I think for a lot of people, that would be like, well, God saved you. Um, and, you know, I'm an atheist because I don't believe in an all-powerful God. And I definitely don't think God's perfect. And I don't think God is the way that... The Christian Bible depicts God, um, but that doesn't mean I don't believe in a higher power, obviously. I mean, I have more faith in this higher power than probably anyone. Um, that's why I've done such crazy stuff, because I trust God. Um, so, um, I don't think a lot of people understand um, the Bible is kind of a story that leads you to the truth. And um, it's not perfect, obviously, because you can't stop the sun. Um, that's what happens in the Bible. Joshua stops the sun. Um, and obviously, the Bible is kind of sexist and um, is pretty anti-gay people. And I think gay people don't have a choice. It's just the way they are is that they're gay. And if you try to change them, then you're forcing them into a life of misery. And you're forcing their partner, because if, if they want to be with a woman, if a man wants to be with a woman, but the man is gay, it's not fair to her. Because he's not going to be attracted to her. And he's always going to have this impulse to be with someone that's not like her. So, um, the reason I think that I was saved, and I've been saved many, many times from very dangerous situations, is because um, I have a special purpose. And I think that purpose is to do this, which is building micro cities and with these things that can extend out, or these are mirrors that can be reflected to generate electricity and or, gen, or desalinate water. And they can extend out like what, 30 feet, maybe even 30 yards, depending on how big we need them. And um, they could even be switched out to be for photo, photovoltaic energy if we need to. But I think they're probably gonna be mirrors and, you know, when I came up with this idea, um, my, my idea initially was for a bunch of them that are close by and there's going to be an Amazon distribution center or some sort of distribution center, maybe a Walmart distribution center um, with conveyor belt. And there were going to be a lot of people that live in these. And um, I wanted to build a bunch of colleges with a central university that's in English. Um, and a bunch of colleges that are in different languages that are like liberal arts colleges, but they might actually offer master's degrees in engineering or PhDs in engineering um, in your own language. And those would be like a German college, um, that's a liberal arts college, a uh, maybe even a Swedish college or Norwegian or Italian or, um, or Spanish speaking college or a Portuguese college or Chinese or Korean, Japanese, um, maybe even Russian. I saw there's a state in Russia that bans women from going to the pool, uh, which uh, Russia's more backwards than people realize, uh, but that's a Muslim area. But, you know, I think that when I start talking about the necessity of a war to produce world's population to reduce oil consumption and reduce carbon emissions, um, that's pretty hard to digest for people in the United States because the United States is full of people from different countries. I mean, we have tons of Iranians, or they're Persians. We have tons of Arabs here. We have tons of, um, like, Ilhan Omar's from Somalia. And if you didn't know, some people from Somalia just killed some of our troops in Kenya. 
um, we have people from all over the world that come to the United States and um, and then they become part of our country and what I tell them is that in the event of a major war where we have to kill that many people and we are working really hard to reduce consumption um, if you're from if you're one of our allies then you're kind of on Noah's Ark like you guys are um, you get to be part of the group of people that survive to try to solve the energy crisis with me and you hopefully are going to be able to um, invest in this pyramid idea and have a college there so that maybe it's a Turkish college uh, maybe it's Polish maybe I, I don't know I mean there are a lot of like maybe Czech a Czech college um, I want everyone on board building this and so as I am a terrible terrible person from an international relations perspective because I my, my, my philosophy on Iran is nuke them just completely nuke them and then let the oil not do anything for a while and we'll just leave it in the ground and my philosophy on Libya probably nuke them um, and, and uh, but, but more than anything I I, I want to I mean I don't know who's, who, who's gonna be on board with us I mean obviously I, I didn't mention a Hindi college a Hindi speaking college where the smartest people from India that don't speak English can go there but they can also if they do speak English they can attend classes at the university the, the English speaking university and that's kind of like the English speaking university is for everyone but it's also only for like but like you might actually get enrolled only there you might not get accepted to the English speaking liberal arts college which is like the honors college um, and so when we when you think about like international relations and how are we gonna have good international relations if, if you're talking about such an extreme act of war um, what it comes down to is bringing people together from different that speak different languages and they have different cultures and you know they maybe in one pyramid we have two colleges there two colleges there two colleges there two college well two colleges there and then another one will have the, the big university there will be one pyramid that's just a university and people live on campus and they do research on photo photovoltaic energy and they do re research on hydrology uh, on water and um, more than anything desalination and I guess we can have a Hebrew speaking college uh, maybe an Arabic speaking college I mean I think Arabic is one of the most widely spoken spoken languages so it makes sense to have a, a, a Arabic speaking college and we all come together and we all work at solving the problems together and then we say okay let's get over some of these patents let's say that we want some of these Tesla engineers um, to work with us and we we can uh, I, I know I talked so much yesterday but I was trying to talk about something good from an international relations perspective where we're all coming together and trying to solve the problems together Donald Trump he sure seems like he wants to ignore the problems and Michael Bloomberg Michael Bloomberg is the only candidate that is not accepting money because he's a billionaire and he's going to spend his own money and he uh, he just so happens to have made all his money spying on corporations and making having relationships with corporations and he just so happens to be someone that's about his ego and not about solving problems and let's face it pretty much everyone that's running for president is about their ego and not solving problems and um, I think Elizabeth Warren is going to be on board with me odd enough I know I said I was a libertarian yesterday in one of my videos I deleted I'm a libertarian on morals I'm like dude you can do whatever you want I do not care about your morals as long as you're not um, taking your morals and destroying my planet um, but I don't know I don't know how to convince people to change I saw I'm, I, I know I'm doing I, I've got 0% in the polls but I just want to say you know I don't believe in God Obviously, I believe in people that are very, 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 very powerful, but I definitely don't think they're perf perfect, and I definitely, I definitely think they're selfish. And I know everyone wants to believe God's this like sweetie pie that's like for them, for every single individual on the planet. It's like, dude, then why is God allowing us to do the things we do? It's because God isn't actually in control.
people are in control. And, you know, what does the Bible say about faith? It says that if you believe in Jesus, then your actions will coincide with your belief. And I don't think a lot of people really want to believe in Jesus. They just want the act of saying, I believe in Jesus, to be everything that, he ha that they have to do instead of actually um, taking action for Jesus, which would be um, trying to make sure that everyone can survive and that we have a sustainable future. Because like I've said in the past, if you drive a car that gets 15 miles per gallon, you're consuming twice as much oil for you, and you could take half your oil if you drove a car that got 30 miles per gallon, or even more, you can get a car that gets 40 miles per gallon. You could take all that extra oil and you could go give it to a poor person who's going to freeze to death, or they're not going to have food. But I don't think people think that way because Jesus is coming back. But if Jesus came back, would you recognize him? I don't think you would. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think Jesus would agree with me. And I think that's the big problem here, is that everyone wants to make God in their image. But, like I say in my book, if the God you believe in loves the same things you hate, loves the same things you love, and hates the same things you hate, you probably created your own God. And, let's face it, I think that pretty much the entire world has created their own God. So, hopefully we can all come together and Stop worshiping ourselves. It's kind of hard, isn't it? I know I worship myself all the time. I always want the world to revolve around me. It doesn't. That's why I've martyred myself for the sake of the planet because I'm, I'm trying to not worship myself. But um, no matter what, I kind of have this ego thing about me where I think that I'm special. Maybe that's because God saved me from someone that didn't want me alive when I was 18 years old.